the Yamuna is there at the central river, which is actually uh, you know, dividing this, this, this Kuru East and Kuru West. So Kuru East basically is the Western Uttar Pradesh and the Hastinapur, Mirat area. So that is the, this particular area. And towards the east of Kuru is Panchala, uh, which is, uh, uh, you, you know, the, 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 there is a currently also there is a city called Kampelya and Ahichatra also is there. The names are not changed. Each of these particular city when, in which Parva of Mahaparada it is present. So 001 means it is mentioned in Vana Parva. The Vana Parva is the third Parva. So like that. So you can actually like for example if you have this particular uh, index, you can know like in which city or which place is mentioned in which Parva and you can go into that particular Mahabharata Parva and then uh, look at detail about it. Uh, I am uh, currently working as a creative director in Wipro but formerly I was uh, uh, working as a scientist in uh, ISRO that was from 2001 to 2000, 2006 and I took part in the Chandrayaan uh, mission as a uh, like a developer for uh, creating that orbital dynamics that is a, a Chandrayaan studies phase uh, which was actually later uh, turned into that uh, actual mission of the Ch Chandrayaan. So, that is uh, one aspect of it and uh, one more thing is uh, the, the Mahabharata studies that I have undertaken it has got uh, some connection with this row because uh, they, are, they were the first people who have uh, uh, studied the Saraswati river using the satellites. So the, that was the, my initial data for me for uh, inter getting introduced into the Mahabharata studies. So I am just giving a brief uh, in, uh, introduction to Mahabharata which uh, most of will be knowing this is the this is the introductory sloka narayanam namaskritya naram chaiva narottamam devim saraswatim chaiva tado jayam udhirayat so because uh, it is uh, its traditional view that whenever you uh, initiate the studies of mahabharata you have you in, initiate it with this uh, this with this particular sloka which is the the giving salutation to uh, the, the great personalities narayan you know krishna and uh, Naram is Arjun and uh, Nara, that is he is it is again his uh, synonym Narottama and then Saraswati which is the symbolization of knowledge and uh, river Saraswati Tato Jayam Udiriyat. Actually there is another version of it where the Vyasa comes as the fourth person who, who, whom you have to give salutation. So uh, Mahabharata basically it's a now you have to consider it as a knowledge reservoir. Actually, I don't consider it as a mono, monolithic, uh, monolithic book because it has uh, thoughts of uh, you know, various uh, aspects like geography is one specialization area for me. But uh, I, I, sh I should uh, tell everybody that if you consider it as kind of uh, 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 some, something like a geographical chronological text, it, it doesn't make any justice to Mahabharata. It is a, it is basically uh, a text from Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. Of course, and in that my focus area is some kind of a scientific study. So, I have to tell this before I am in initiating any, any of these uh, studies about uh, geography in Mahabharata. So, Dharmecha, Kamecha, Mokshecha, Bharadarshapa, Yedi Hastiti, Yedi Hastiti Anyatra, Yena Hastita, Tat Kvachit. So, everything about Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha is there in Mahabharata. So, in Assume there is a, some kind of in future the entire civilization got completely destroyed. You can actually re-establish dharma using Mahabharata alone because it contains everything including the names of the locations. That is what I my point of study but it also includes dharma, artha, kama and moksha. So you can actually spring up again dharma and dharmic tradition back just by having Mahabharata alone. So this is a comparison of uh, Mahabharata Parvas. So you can see the, the Shanti Parva and the, you can see something like a big sphere. If you consider it something like a planet, you, can, you know that it's a, it's a very big, right? Some of the Parvas, you can see the, uh, the Swarga Ravana Parva, it's very small. So it is in terms of the number of verses. I, I just created this uh, visual so that given under just a pictorial representation of Mahaparat, how it looks like. So the, some of the Parvas are very big, much bigger than Ramayana. Well, some others are very short. So, when you are going through analysis, the geographical data or chronological data, you should be able to, you have to understand this particular picture. And then the blue color is Harivam Shah, it's the appendix of Mahabharata, but it's also included as part of Mahabharata to consider that it is a 
more than 100,000 verses. And this is uh, another uh, slide I normally use in our all the talks on Mahabharat to give another perspective of how, how Mahabharat, the size of Mahabharat compares with the other texts. You can see the Ramayana, the green, uh, sorry, the, the green color. Yeah, this is Ramayana, this is Mahabharat and you can see other Puranas and the, this is the Vedas, no, four Vedas. So this is the size of Mahabharat, just give an example, give an understanding of what is the size. And then uh, we come to uh, Vyas. So actually this is again uh, kind of, a, uh, uh, no, it's not a deified kind of a view of Vyas, but uh, when, you, when you look at uh, whether Vyas as a, as a uh, researcher on the, the the chronology or the geography of Mahabharata. He is a great scholar and ascetic in the Brigul really age. Ne? Parashara and Vasista are the, his forefathers. And uh, basically his, his uh, forefathers like Vasista, they are Vedic seers and he is uh, basically having that contribution to the Kurukshetra war narrative. And you, you just look at Mahabharata, in, that verses in the Bhishma Parava and everything where the Vyasa have a kind of a discussion uh, with Dhritarashtra. He, he is himself expressing as an expert on the geography. And then he talks about uh, another, the various kingdoms, etc. And that is my uh, main primary subject of my study. And uh, this, this may be no, you may be known to you, the, how the Mahabharata uh, can be considered as uh, growing from 8800 verses to 24,000 to 100,000. Like uh, the, there is uh, the the dialogue between Sanjay and Dhritarashtra, that is a core. Then you have uh, Vaishampayana and Janamejaya having a discourse. And then again, Ugrasa, Sauti and uh, uh, Shaunaga having a discourse. And these are all separated with uh, lots of time. And a lot of people have a di dispute on the number of uh, verses. I am not going into that details. So now it comes to the, the core subject of my uh, this talk. So that is the Bharatvarsha maps. So, as part of my studies, uh, how it goes is uh, like uh, from, the, from the childhood onwards, I have, uh, I read this Mahabharat, I, I heard about, for example, I heard about some place, like for example, Nishatha. So the, then I heard about like Nala and the Mayanti story is there and the, Nala is the king of Nishatha. So then I asked my pa father, you know, where is this Nishatha located? So he said, no, that's, you know, we cannot know right now. It could be somewhere in the North India somewhere. So that is where like, so the traditional uh, speakers or the, the, the readers of Mahabharata, they don't know, like for example, some location where it is. So the, any kind of question, where is Panchal, where is, where is Kururashtra, uh, where is Vidharba, where is Hey Heya, nobody is able to answer. So the narrative is, they tell the story, they give the narrative. But we are actually don't know where, no, how, means these place names are mentioned, but where are they and that kind of curiosity I have from the childhood onwards. So then I started doing that analysis, uh, that was around in 1990s, somewhere close to 1980s, there was no computer or anything that I just read about this. I have uh, create a map of India, like uh, this, in the 10th standard, uh, my elder brothers, you know, they have this uh, map of India, you know, blank chart. So in that I plot that, based on my current understanding I plot that. And then um, since starting from 1993 I, I got introduced to computers and all, then I started creating digital maps. And then uh, it becomes a little more, uh, no, uh, bigger, grow it bigger and bigger. And finally in 2004, uh, when I was in ISRO, I have created this particular map. And this is now, this is now published in Wikipedia and my own site, uh, the ancient voice. So uh, here, uh, what is basically uh, is that all the knowledge I have acquired for the last 20 years on uh, various uh, locations of the kingdoms, the Janabatas, I have mapped into uh, this particular map. So you can see here, uh, like this is the result of my own inquiries on the where are these locations. So some of them will be very familiar to you, the Kuru Rashtra. That is where we are. We are now speaking. I am speaking right now, and all of you are here in the Kururashtra. That is the, the the Haryana and the the eastern UP, Delhi, and all this falls in the Kururashtra. And you have east and west. So east is basically, uh, if you look at from the Mahabharat point of view, east is where the Duryodhan and the 
uh, those people were uh, staying and then in the west that is the the haryana region is where the kurujangala is where the pandavas were uh, living so this the yamuna is there at the central river which is actually uh, you know, dividing this, this this kuru east and kuru west so kuru east basically is the western uttar pradesh and the hastinapur Mirat area so that is the, this particular area and towards the east of kuru is panchala uh, which is uh, uh, you, you know, the, 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 there is a currently also there is a city called Kampelya and Ahichatra also is there. The names are not changed. So that is the thing. And in Kuru and you know, Hastinapur, the name is not changed yet. Indrapras, that is the Delhi, it is still the name is uh, retained. And uh, you have so, but this this much maybe most of people knows. When the, then the, there is some kind of uh, darkness or maybe uh, the lacuna here. Like what uh, there is a Kosala here. The Kosala is the domain of Ramayana. You have the Kosala here and then the Videha, the, the kingdom of Janaka, another Sita's kingdom. And what is there in between? So is there any interaction between the Kurus and the, uh, the, the Ikshvakus in the Kosala? No. The reason is this particular forest called Naimisha. So that sits in between these two particular uh, kingdoms. No, that is why there are no much interest. But they, of course, they, they will travel through this Ganga river and then they have some kind of interaction. There is no direct, so that is in Ramayana, you don't see the anything like Panchala is described as a neighbor of Kosala. Because ideally, this Videha is the, the, the mentioned as the neighborhood. It is mentioned as the eastern side of Kosala Rashtra. But nothing is mentioned to the west of Kosala because the Namisha forest is there. And only after crossing the Naimisha, they will go to the, the Bharatas and the Kurus, which is the Panchala and Kuru region. So this, this kind of information, you can get it from uh, this, this particular map. And you have Gandhara here, where the Shakuni is uh, ruling, and then Kamboja, and then the Bahlikas, because this is the, the branch of the Kurus, you know, the, the, the cousins of uh, you know, Dhritarashtra. Basically, um, Shantanu, and uh, he has got a brother called Bahlika and Devapi, uh, elder brother. So the elder brother didn't uh, accept royalty because he, he wanted to be an ascetic. So he went to the Himalayas. And the, the next brother is Bahlika. He become a ruler of the maternal kingdom. So that is uh, where he is staying. That is how uh, you got uh, the Shantanu got the, the kingdom of uh, Kuru for himself. And he was ruling from here. So this kind of uh, and you have Matsyas, no? the, this is where the, the Pandavas lived uh, in, uh, uh, in their uh, Ajnatavas. And you have, uh, yeah, now my primary question I was asking, no? the, the Nishatha. So he, he is there in the, in the Gwalia re, the region. And you have another, like uh, there, are this, there are two kingdoms, Nishatha. So it is basically what happens is that uh, this is a Sanskritized name. Whereas the Nishada is, uh, you can say, uh, it, it is ruled by the, the Ekalavya and you know, such, such people. But they ideally, it means basically these both kingdoms are the same. And when you plot it, you can see that they are in almost in the neighborhood. So the Nishadha and Nishada, there are some connections. So and then uh, you have the Avanti in the extreme south and uh, like that. So I'm just gi giving you an example of, and then you, you have the southern part of the same same map. So uh, you can see the Kerala, Kerala, Pandya, and Chola, Lanka, and then the the, the Kishkinda, and and the, then there is. So this is another important thing, like uh, because the Aryan invasion theory is very very much uh, rooted. Anyway, it's almost getting uprooted. So it's like the real name Dravida. That is mentioned when it comes in Mahabharata, it is actually referring to a kingdom. And the kingdom lied somewhere in adjacent to the Chola, Kanchi, and uh, uh, no, this uh, Karnataka, Mahishaka, and Kishkinda. So it is basically uh, this particular name they have taken and then made all the fuss about Aryan Dravidi and everything. But actually, it is basically a territory. And uh, of course, uh, there is another terminology because same name can be used for uh, various things. So apart from being a kingdom, it's sometimes the Pandey Chola, Kerala, all these things combinedly they call Dravida. But there is no kind of a kind of conflict between the Dravida and the 
the other northern kingdoms uh, just like what uh, what the Britishers or the Max Muller used to say. No, it, there was no, nothing like that. All the kingdoms were, uh, no, uh, some of them were trying for domination, they were trying for getting the power and so but there are no special you know especially something like the this dravidas were fighting against the north or the north was fighting against the south or anything like that so that was the the map i have created in 2004 and then uh, I, this is some more detailed analysis i have done and then i have expanded the map with a little more higher resolution so that i can plot the cities so that this map was almost ready by 2008 uh, and then, uh, so you can see, like I have uh, each of these particular kingdoms, uh, the capital city or some other city, all those things I have plotted here. For example, Trigartha, it has got a capital Prasthala, so that is currently Jalandhar. Uh, and then the Madhra Desh, you know, the, the, the kingdom of uh, the maternal uncles of the Pandavas, the, 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 the Madri, uh, Madri's kingdom and Shalya's kingdom, that is the Madhra Desh. You got Sakala or the Sial court that is in Pakistan, and you have got uh, the, the Raja Vasa that is a Cambodia city's capital that is Rajauri, uh, that is where the terrorists are now fighting with the Indian military, and you have got uh, the Gandhara with uh, its own uh, no, kingdom, cities like Pushkalavati, uh, and then uh, the one more was there, Takshashila, yes, same name, it, 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 they always have the same name, and you got the uh, this uh, the Kekaya, where the Kaikei was, no? the Kaikei of Ramayana, and then in Mahabharata also Kekaya is mentioned because some of the allies of uh, Pandavas came from here, the Kekaya brothers. And uh, so, see, see, this, this is a little more expanded map. Uh, and here, this is a central western region, so you can see uh, so many other kingdoms mentioned here, uh, some of them like Kunti. Kunti is basically a name of a kingdom, but uh, the princes of that kingdom also have that same, they just like Panchali. So the, the Panchala is here and uh, the Panchali got that name from the kingdom, similarly Kunti got that name from here. And uh, you have the Hei Hei and you can see the Mahishmati, maybe in the next slide it will be very clear, which was the Rajamauli's <laughs> capital. I mean, so uh, that Mahishmati uh, was a kingdom, mentioned as a kingdom in that uh, movie, Rajamauli's movie. But actually, it is the capital of the Heiheya Kingdom. That is how Mahabharata and Ramayana, even Ramayana also mention it like that. Uh, and uh, similarly, there are other uh, the kingdoms. And this is the easternmost point mentioned in Ramayana and Mahabharata. Mostly in Mahabharata, that is the Lauhitya. And it is the name of the Brahmaputra river. So the, the masculine name of Brahmaputra is not mentioned in Mahabharata or Ramayana. But the actual name uh, for this river was Lauhitya, which is, is a red, reddish color. Because of that, it is called Lauhitya. And then you have uh, these uh, other kingdoms like the, the Bengal region, right? The Sukhma and uh, Wanga. Wanga is what? The Bengal is. Like that is the same name. And uh, the Sukhma and Prasukhma, basically, the, the Pundra, all these are Bangladesh area. Then Angadesh, which is in Bihar, southern Bihar, uh, south southwards to the Ganga River. And then Magadha also, uh, the southern Bihar region. At Kashi, which is the oldest city, and you have uh, this southern part of it. So the, there is some kind of updation I have done in the, in the very recent maps. So the Dandaga forest I have almost uh, made it somewhere here. This particular empty area, the area is empty basically because there are there is it was a big forest here, and the, the, that is the Dandaga forest. And currently there is one name which uh, continue that is Dantewada. That is actually a remnant of the Dantaka, uh, uh, Dantaka Aranya name. And this much area, right, you can see this much more entire area, it is nameless. This entire area was a big forest. And that is the Dantaka forest. And the core, core part of it is here, like the Dantevada. And uh, the Rama, Rama has traveled through like this. And then the southern part of it. And then you can see the, the, the this, uh, southern part also a little more in detail. And uh, what you are seeing here is uh, the number of uh, kingdoms I have studied in total. That is uh, coming around uh, uh, 50, 150. And I have uh, actually still uh, not completely plotted all these 150 kingdoms because it's huge data. And uh, I'm in the process of updating a much bigger resolution map. 
uh, almost uh, the f uh, 4k text 4k means i think you understand 40 uh, no, it's a uh, 4000 into 4000 that kind of a 4k text because no other texture can handle this much amount of data so it will be a very huge uh, kind of a map with a very small detail just like it's almost like a much more detailed than the current india map a political map of india with all the cities and it should be much more detailed because we have that much amount of data we have that, that much amount of data that even the current political map of india don't have that, that is the this is the number of kingdoms janapatas of course the the, king, the in sanskrit it is uh, they are talking in mahabharata the terminology used is the janapatas for the kingdoms uh, so uh, th this is the this is the kind of uh, data that we have uh, and i have classified it into you know, southern province northern province and uh, some non kshatriya kingdoms and one more point i have to make it's like uh, there is a chronology into that i will talk to that if i have got some time so not all the kingdoms were actually you know emerged at the same time uh, because there is a kind of evolution to it but it's a how unfortunately it is a big big topic to discuss but i have to say that you no know, all the all these particular number of kingdoms were at once not present uh, because some of them were older some of them got uh, uh, divided into another kingdom so it's just a compilation of a list of kingdoms and uh, this is uh, represented in mahabharat as if sanjay is talking to dhritarashtra about all these things at, at the same time uh, but there is a possibility that this is again a question of because different scholars will have a different approach uh, uh, that uh, all these kingdoms were not at once present at the same time some of them were later and uh, this is another like uh, study all these uh, this particular names of villages towns and cities and this is an analysis data like each of these particular city when in which parva of mahabharata it is present so 001 means it is mentioned in vanaparva the vanaparva is the third parva so like that so you can actually like for example if you have this particular uh, index you can know like in which city or which place which is mentioned in which parva and you can go into that particular mahabharata parva and then uh, look at detail about it and you have the villages towns cities and it's a, it's a continuation and of course this is the the name of the site where you can actually see this 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 data and uh, so that is about the cities villages um, there's uh, towns uh, capital cities pilgrim centers and uh, ashramas everything i have in that previous list and this is another the geog much more in a geographical manner like it's not political so you the mountains rivers and lakes and uh, geographical regions so the there is a lot of uh, interesting verses in mahabharat uh, basically it's a bhuvana kosha that is uh, the conversation between sanjaya and dhritarashtra and this, this is an initial kind of a uh, adhyaya chapter in uh, sixth bhishma parva of mahabharat uh, where he talks first about the the geography the janapadas etc uh, of uh, bharata varsha uh, and uh, only after that the mahabharata war narrative starts the kurukshetra war like uh, uh, that uh, mahabharata war narrative starts with bhagavad gita i think you know about that dharma kshetre kurukshetre samaveta yudhava mamaga pandava chaiva kima kurvata sanjaya that is a starting point of the kurukshetra war narrative all these things is uh, actually discussed before that the geography and even chronology also discussed which is some of uh, other scholars like uh, nilesh ok and uh, uh, narhari achar using for uh, dating mahabharat the chronology also they they are discussing and then geography also discussed so this is the geography discussion part everything the author all of this uh, information is uh, like uh, laid out in mahabharat as if it is a conversation between sanjaya the minister of dhritarashtra and Dhritara, with uh, dhritarashtra so he is uh, talking about this uh, mahendra malaya sakhya suktiman rakshwan api vindhyas uh, pariyatras so these are these are the the main kula parvadas of uh, uh, bharat varsha so you can see malaya is the southern part of the the sakhya western ghats so it is in kerala and the sakhya is the northern part and the bridge the bridge is the, the the gap is the palgat uh, no this is the this is where you know you can travel uh, for example people of kerala travel to bangalore without crossing mountain through this pass so this is the the palgat pass so it divides the malaya and the sakhya sakhya is like very big length from from the this particular point of kerala up to this much point in maharashtra it is sakhya then you vindhya is like this the, the central mountain 
and then Pariyatra is the mountains, uh, western mountains in Rajasthan, then Shuktimat. It is the Chedi, the, the kingdom of Chedi is surrounded by Shuktimat mountains. Chedi is the Bundelkhand region and Riksha mountains. The Jambavan is mentioned as uh, coming from Riksha, Riksha Parvata. Jambavan, the, no, the, the oldest Vanara. And then you have Mahendra mountains that is in Orissa, where Parashram was uh, doing the tapas. And uh, this is again the data, uh, like uh, different mountains where it is mentioned in each parva. And uh, again, this is a big data. This is the number of rivers mentioned in Mahabharat. And uh, I have not even identified all of this because it's a huge information. Uh, maybe only 30% of the rivers I have an identification. Remaining is without any identification, but I'm just listing out the data. And uh, once I have complete identification is there, you can actually add into the that highly detailed 4K map. But still that currently it is still is not possible except few like Lohitya no, I have mentioned earlier but uh, you cannot you have we, we may have to maybe refer some other Puranas and uh, extensively for uh, the Kalidasa and no, the, the Sanskrit text in the during the time of Kalidasa and so then only we can actually identify it completely and uh, this is the number of forests uh, no, the some of the the, the big forests uh, no, like, like uh, Dwaita and uh, Kamekavana all these things are discussed here and uh, the number okay the lakes around 30 names of lakes and 30 names of forests uh, and uh, these are the regions uh, mentioned in like airavata region for example so the airavata region is uh, very interesting uh, it all the descriptions uh, when you try to plot airavata you can you can consider it as uh, siberia because they mention about uh, no, the entire year the uh, the land is covered by snow and then uh, the, the duration of the day you know it's uh, varies from uh, no, 45 uh, for, uh, means 90 percent of your day is uh, daylight and the remaining 10 percent is night at some other time it is 90 percent night and the 10 percent daylight so every description uh, make it identify with siberia so that's what i am some of the interesting regions and uh, again this sanjaya's description he talks about uh, the entire world, it's not, not just Bharatvarsh. Because he started with Bharatvarsh, all the kingdoms and rivers and lakes. Then he talks about the entire uh, world. So, some of the interesting facts I am just uh, pointing out. So, he is mentioning it, it is a Sudarshanam, the, the entire world there, which is mentioning Sudarshanam, Pravakshami, Dvivamte, Kurunandana, Parimandalo, Maharaja, Dviposu, Chakrasam, Sita. So, it is like mentioning about a circular continent and so there is not, nothing like a circular continent anywhere. But if you make a polar asymmetric equidistant projection of the globe, you see the circular, you can see Antarctica becomes a circle there. Because that is how the in, the, in this particular kind of projection, southern pole will become a circle. Then it becomes all the narrative become correct. Now then because then Sudarshanam is then this particular uh, Antarctic. And uh, then you have Lamana, Sam Lamana Samutra, it's an even salt ocean, it's basically this big ocean without differentiation. And then uh, you have, uh, uh, there is, uh, uh, this is Pipalas, no? there is, uh, uh, there is uh, two continents which is like a people tree. And then uh, there are two continents which is like a rabbit, higher, no? this, everything, like everything about uh, this particular description matches with a polar asymmetric equidistance uh, projection. So, what does that mean? Do, that I, during the time of Sanjaya, somebody made a map like this. That is what a question comes. But the data points to everything is you know, ex exactly pointing to the same only. That is the only reason why it, it can be true. There is no other way you can have a circular uh, Sudarshanam. And uh, then he mentioned about this uh, six mountains. Uh, I have uh, tried to identify where it where is all this, uh, these mountains and seven uh, seven regions between these mountains this is called varshas which are these are big regions like not just uh, just bharat varsh no? bharat varsh is the entire bharat so just similarly some other varshas so this is the plot of these varshas that uh, the sanjay is mentioning so you can see the bharat varsh is uh, in the southern part and uh, there is some mention like it's a bow shaped it, it is looking like a Thanus. Now that is what Bharat Varsh is about. That is southern. And it is the boundary is Himavan. And then you got Himavat Varsha. 
himavat varsha means uh, no, it is handwich between hemakuda and himavan so you can consider it that as a tibet tibetan region actually no, not exactly tibet but southern tibet where that the himalayan ranges are like uh, growing up and then you have hari varsha and this is tibet this is like indus brahmaputra basin like uh, the himavat varsha and the tibet is basically the hari varsha and this identification is not just once multiple times uh, during arjuna stavalas everything this hari varsha is identification tibet gets strengthened again and again and after that the sweta varsha is there that is like uh, somewhere to the north of uh, tibet and the, not the color the name is sweta na? that is like it's snow covered basically that's why it's white colored and you have uh, the the tian shan mountains now this is a like bounding that region and uh, that is called nila nila mountains and uh, currently if you look at tian shan mountain and you take any photograph it is bluish color in uh, you can see that it is bluish color and then altai range there is a sweta varsha and uh, you, even if you currently go and take a photo of this particular range it's whitish in color because of the snow and and, and to the north you have the sringivan sringivan range is a cyan range you can identify it i have identified it based on the geological features not based on the names can't, we can't identify it based on the etymology basically so and so you are after that the airavata varsha is there it is again mentioned as a bow shaped and you can see and the siberian region is again like a bow just like here the bow shaped so this is the correspondence and whatever the sanjaya's the geography he is describing is the eurasia eurasia basically because he is just uh, focusing only from the kanyakumari towards just north and till the time he is touches the polar uh, northern the ocean so not not much conversion about this area it just to the towards the south of the bharatvarsha and uh, you can see here a little more detailed uh, map of it bharatvarsha is there himavatvarsha then the the mountains which are uh, separating them there is a bhadravarsha then uttarakuru is there and then ilavata ilavratvarsha is this is the area where pururavas uh, urveshi all these people are mentioned in this area this is considered as a very central very sacred region and you have ketu mala na, that is coming into uh, some of, one of the central asian countries now and this is a central point this this area is considered as the meru parvat and then in the meru parvat all these other parvats are joining the nila parvat tian shan and uh, the this himalayan mountains all these comes are joining so that is the axis mundi then airavata have identified as siberia and uh, you have this is another like another map of it like uh, how this uh, why i am in interested is because uh, almost i have got uh, full detail about the bharatvarsha and somewhat the other regions i am just focusing on so uh, maybe uh, i'll skip this very 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 quickly uh, this is like not only the the geography how things happens when it is in motion motion means somebody is traveling so there is extensive travels mentioned in mahabharat so you can see this is the big list of it and uh, you know various uh, the arjuna and the five pandavas are the main travelers here just like in ramayana rama is a traveler so you can see they have military campaigns they have uh, tirtha yatras and then all these things and uh, so this is how it is arranged basically uh, how the travels are classified rajasuya digvijaya shomeda and battles etc so this is arjuna's travels how the arjuna after this uh, incident with uh, draupadi and yudhishthira he went and went on a pilgrimage and married uh, chitrakanta ulupi so this this is a circuit uh, this is a kind of a uh, circular route and this is some alternatives that uh, anyway i'm not going into details uh, each, this route can have uh, you know based on some data variation that can have alternatives that's what i am mentioning here and uh, these are the digvijayas of uh, pandu it is mentioned maybe one of the interesting part i will talk and then i'll conclude um, here uh, you can see this is arjuna digvijaya for the rajasuya and in this particular narrative there is a mention about china and uh, we, you can actually, basically this this particular identification of china is based on the relative motion of arjuna so in that narrative he is mentioning about like uh, after the tukaras he has come have a kind of uh, neighborhood of uh, tusharas tushara means uh, somewhere in the kashmir northern region 
So, and then there is a China is mentioned. And after that, after the mention in the original travel, it, he is again mentioned that the Chinas came with tribute to Yudhishthira during Rajasuya. And then the, in that list, uh, it is mentioned that a lot of woolen, uh, woolen items, all these things came from here. So, it is a cold country. The China that is mentioned in Mahabharata is a cold country. That is one uh, um, thing and it is always mentioned in the Himalayan region. And that is how it can be identified. Now, if you go and search into the Chinese history, they will say that the, their, their culture and civilization came somewhere close to the Himalayas. So, they are matching up. So, this is, uh, this is something which is not at, uh, accepted by the mainstream because they are saying the, of course, they know the connection between India and China and the, all the culture and civilization of China came from India. But the word China, uh, which is being discussed, uh, described in Mahabharata, not much study has been gone into that and the location, every aspect of it. But uh, ultimately, when you have a kind of a combined analysis of Chinese text with uh, the Mahabharat, you get more information about it. But this is my location currently is based on the motion of uh, the in the travel narratives, how the Arjuna is moving and based on other references in uh, Mahabharata about China, you can uh, locate it somewhere here in the uh, close to Kashmir area. And uh, strangely enough, the currently that uh, Chinese have occupied that same region around in Kashmir, in the northern, northeastern region as, as their own territory. I don't know whether they have read Mahabharata, but it is uh, some coincidence, I don't know. So, uh, this is uh, the last, uh, you can say, the polarization. No? The, since you have a Mahabharata, this, uh, this uh, Bharat Varsha map, you can look at uh, Mahabharata and see which are the countries allied with uh, Kurus and which are the Vashtu. It's very easy. Once you have the data, then the next thing is just plot, and you can see this kind of a map emerging. So the main uh, main kind of source for Pandavas were the southern uh, kingdoms, and uh, this this particular bluish color, all this were supporting the Pandavas. And what about remaining everything is gone to uh, Duryodhan because he got the you know, eleven Akshaganis, and Pandavas got uh, from this much area, this northern you know, Panchala and uh, Matsya, Nishada. There is some little bit of uh, northern Shivi and all because their marriage relationship of the Pandavas and southern kingdoms uh, and, uh, uh, is contributed to the army of uh, Pandavas. Whereas the remaining everything Bharatavarsha went to Duryodhana. I think that this concludes uh, my talk.